Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to AECC Indonesia today's session. Uh, our session for today is Getting into Data Science. My name is Lani Sinarso, and I will be your host for this afternoon session. Salam kenal bagi mereka yang baru pertama kali mengikuti acara kami. And thank you, everyone, for taking the time to join us this afternoon. Our today's session, as I mentioned earlier, is Getting into Data Science. And that is how to get the best insights from your data and achieve more with less time. Explore the world of data science, big data, and AI with a simple guide to getting started in data analytics. Our special speaker for today is Professor Erika Filte Legara, the Academic Program Director for Master of Science in Data Science at uh, Abol. Abol T School of Innovation, Technology and Entrepreneur, Entrepreneurship in uh, Asian Institute of Management in the Philippines. She's also an independent director at a publicly listed central bank, supervised financial institution, and also a scientist. And as a scientist, her research interest includes complexity science, data science and artificial intelligence, urban science, and also computational social science. I would also like to introduce you to Toffee Dater, student admission coordinator for Master of Science in Data Science, and also Vincent Patrick de la Cruz, the recruitment and admissions manager uh, at Asian is. Asia Institute of Management who are joining us today as well, and who are going to introduce to you the MSDS program at Asian Institute of Management afterwards. So without further ado, let me pass on the screen to Prof. Erika uh, to further introduce herself and kick off this afternoon session. Let me remind you, you, however, should you have a question during the session, please do type it in the Q&A box and not the chat box so that we won't miss your questions. All right, over to you, Prof. E. Thank you so much, Lani, for that warm introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Tofi will actually help me flash the slide deck. Again, I'm, I'm Erika Legara. I'm from the Asian Institute of Management. So what I wanted to do uh, today is uh, to talk about data science and artificial intelligence to truly contextualize it. And the hope is that you'll find the, the presentation or the field of data science interesting enough for you to actually ask more about AIM's MS Data Science Program. Next. Um, so let me first introduce myself. I'm actually wearing a lot of hats. Uh, I'm an educator primarily. Uh, initially, my training was in physics. I have a PhD in physics, and I taught in the premier university of the country, UP Diliman. Uh, but then after that, the Singapore government uh, wanted to, to get scientists in the Asian region with expertise in complex system science. So I became a full-time scientist. Now, when I was in UP Diliman, I was doing a lot of research work that was really truly data-driven science. But when I got in Singapore as a, as a government scientist, the focus was really on R&D. And at that time, this was back in 2012, all the way to 2017, people were now starting to talk about the field of data science. And um, I joined, I, I went back home to the Philippines to join a business school because at this time, businesses are now also very much interested in data science, in, in artificial intelligence, and STEM in general. So when, when I became part of the business school, lots of engagements there. And now I am consulting for, for various uh, corporations and even the government. And what I hope to do today is to be able to somehow share uh, to everyone why the interest in the field of analytics across all of these uh, various sectors. So in the next slide, um, we, I'll just be briefly talking about um, AIM as an institution. 
So the Asian Institute of Management was actually founded in 1968 um, with the Harvard Business School. That's why at that time it was called um, the Harvard Business School, um, the Asian Harvard Business School, sorry. So it's also the first school in Southeast Asia to receive an accreditation from AACSB. It's like the gold standard when it comes to accrediting business schools around the world. Less than 5%, the last I checked, um, of all business schools globally are AACSB accredited. So this is such a prestigious accreditation. And it's also alma mater to a majority of corporate directors at the 25 most valuable listed companies in the country. So if you want to expand, for example, your Asian or ASEAN network, and you want to have this um, connections with the enterprises, AIM is definitely a way to go. So this, the, in the next slide, you will see uh, the Aboiti School of Innovation, Technology, and Entrepreneurship. It's one of the business schools, uh, one of the four schools, sorry, within AIM. It houses um, multiple programs, including the Master of Science in Data Science. I really wanted to mention this because once you become part of the Data Science Program of AIM, you will have all of these network from the sister programs. Like um, in the Master in Innovation and Business, you have there the innovators. So they are the ones who want to build their own startups. They're the ones in the innovation center of organizations. Then you also have the Master in Entrepreneurship. Those who enroll here are all businessmen, meaning they're running their own businesses. We also have the PhD in Data Science and the Access Lab, which is a um, corporate laboratory working closely with enterprises and government agencies in various data science and AI projects. So somehow you'll see here how we make sure that we're always updated by always linking ourselves with the companies, with the enterprises. Well, that's why we're a business school. So um, in the next slide, again, the, the hope here is later we'll be talking about data science, but I want you to appreciate why data science is now being considered as a strategic capability by many organizations. So um, MIT Slow Management Review uh, back in 2017 conducted a survey, as you will see here uh, in the next slide. Uh, what they did was they asked individuals if, um, if they believe that AI will have a huge impact on their products and services. So these respondents are actually the executives of the top industries around the world, about 3,000 of them. And in 2017, so the report was in 2018, but in 2017, um, there were only 76% uh, of them who said yes. Then just a year later, and now what you see here is the number, the 93%. But you'd be surprised in the next slide, in less than three years, you'll see that by 2021, the same set of questions, almost the same enterprises, they're now saying that 99% of them are investing in data science and AI, right? And if you look at the Philippines, I'm pretty sure uh, the number in, in Indonesia is higher, but if you look at the Philippines in the next slide, 64% um, now, of our enterprises are investing in technology and digital upskilling goals. And this is because, next slide please, many of the organizations um, really want to become analytical competitors. And when you say that you're an analytical competitor, it means that you're using data science and advanced analytics, not just for specific functions in the organization, but enterprise-wide. More, uh, moreover, your leaders are all analytics driven. And very clearly, there is a huge demand for business leaders with a data driven mindset. Unfortunately, there is a scarcity of them. And the hope is that at AIM, we train you to become data science leaders. And I'll talk more about that later. But first, I'm not so sure if you, in the, in the, in the next slide, if you've seen this. Um, news from The Economist that actually says that data science and data is now the new oil. It's considered a strategic asset. But then we have to ask ourselves again, what do we mean by 
data as a strategic asset. Um, just to also excite you, in the next slide, we show you uh, some exciting numbers. Um, EDBI and Kearney, these are top consulting firms based in Singapore, um, have an estimate that by 2030, AI could add up to a trillion US dollars to the economy of Southeast Asia. I, I usually report the number in the Philippines, which is 92 billion. Uh, but then uh, when I gave a talk in, in Indonesia uh, a few weeks ago, I had to also look it up. And I was um, astonished to see that for Indonesia, the promise of AI is much, much, much larger. $366 billion, right? And the ramping up of this, as you will see in the next slide, uh, also means that there will be a huge demand of talents. Um, unfortunately, as you can see here as well, the rows here are the, are the different challenges that these countries, the columns are actually facing. And the dark purple indicates that um, the, 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 there's a high amount of issues uh, in terms of the lack of talent to realize the returns of data science and AI, and also the difficulty in finding and attracting AI talent. So the competition among enterprises is steep you know, to get the right data science talent. The good news for data scientists is that, well, we are very much in demand, not just in our countries, but across Southeast Asia, even across the world. Um, next slide, please. So um, this is just to show you, uh, I know that the talk is not about salaries, but you know, maybe you get excited about this. Um, in the Philippines, the salary for our data scientists is about 20 million IDR per month. In the next slide, um, we show uh, this is um, the, 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 how much data scientists in Jakarta make. That's about 29 million IDR on average. In the next slide, you will see here the average uh, compensation that our um, graduates are actually raking in. Uh, this number I just recently received, uh, it's 61 million IDR per month. That is really huge um, on average you know, uh, compared to the other uh, degree programs and the other um, positions. Now, if you go to the next slide, I'm also showing Singapore because the demand is the same. The skill sets that will be required of you, whether you're in the Philippines or Indonesia or Singapore, they are the same. So the training that you will be getting at AIM will most definitely prepare you for Singapore. In fact, some of our graduates are now based in Singapore, in India, and also in Canada, and some are also in the US. And if you're a data scientist in Singapore, the average um, salary per month is 81 million IDR. And finally, if you want to study, uh, to work in the US, um, that's in the next slide, Tofi, um, you are expected to earn about 129 million IDR. Just um, imagine, that's really and uh, truly mind blowing. And the, the nice part uh, in the next slide, you will see that the beauty of data science is you're not just stuck in one particular sector. In fact, you can choose a sector where you would want to be useful in education, in space exploration, in banking, in logistics and transportation, as long as there's data in the sector and as long as prediction is something that they value, you definitely have a position there as a data scientist. So what is a data science or what is, data, uh, what is a data scientist and what is data science? In the next slide, you will see that uh, you have here these three Venn diagrams. Um, it's a combination of mathematics and statistics, or sometimes we just call it applied math, and then computer science plus the domain, the one that you saw earlier, all of the sectors there, that's the domain. That is data science, the intersection of these three. And artificial intelligence is, um, well, they're also very mindful of the application, but that's not the, the, the only focus when it comes to AI. With AI, it's really pushing the boundaries of algorithmic innovation. So it could be very, very technical. So I wanted to show you this because I want to focus on the field of data science. But, you know, just for everyone to have the same definition of what AI is, in the next slide, we define more formally what AI is. So it's any technique that enables computers to mimic 
human intelligence using logic, if then rules, decision trees, and machine learning, including deep learning. Deep learning is machine learning. It's a subset of machine learning using a particular tool that somehow copies the structure of the human brain. So let's see how that works in the next slide. Um, let's say you have uh, 10 customers, okay? Uh, let's say that you are a bank that gives out uh, loans. And here you have a list of customers that repay their debt and those that defaulted. You also have information on the occupation, the age, and low salary ratio. Uh, and then in the next slide, you'll see that you have a new um, customer. And um, so in the new customer, the previous slide, sorry, one more slide back, uh, Tofi. Here, um, you will see that you have a new customer that's the final row from the industrial sector, 30 years old with a loan salary of 1.65. So I'm just going to give you a few minutes um, to guess somehow in your own head no, whether you're going to approve the loan application of this individual or not. That would, of, of course, depend on your prediction of the likely outcome. Maybe just one minute. Okay, have you thought about it? So the likely outcome, right, is that this person is going to default. So if that is your prediction, then of course you're not going to approve the loan. Okay, let's look at the next slide, why we think that, that that person is going to default. Well, in the table, we saw that for all of the loan salary ratio that's less than two, uh, less than three, all the borrowers actually repaid their debts. But those who, bought, who had a loan salary ratio of greater than three, they all um, defaulted. So it means that we have a particular rule. So this is very simple. This is what machine learning can, in fact, do. Find patterns in the data. And they're much more sophisticated than us. For example, in the next slide, you'll see there are so many columns. This time around, we cannot just use our eyes no? and you know, do the computation. Maybe if you're a genius... Maybe you can do that uh, pattern finding, but it will be very tough for us. For example, uh, you'll see here in the next, uh, we're highlighting different numbers and you will see that the pattern that we say, said, like for example, below three, you're going to um, repay, but above three, you will default. But that's not the case here anymore because you have other variables in play. But that's for the humans. For the machines, for sure, they will be able to find that particular pattern. So in the next slide, this is a cute example, uh, puppy versus muffin. No? Uh, so you can see here uh, a picture of a, a set of uh, puppy photos and a set of muffin photos. And the idea is to classify the photos whether they're a puppy or a muffin. And on the right side, you'll see that um, the, the y-axis is the error rate. So the higher it is, the more erroneous your prediction is. So you're wrong. Um, the lower it is, the better your prediction is. And across the x-axis is the time, the years, 2010 all the way to 2015. You can see that, yeah, in 2010, humans were better than algorithms when it came to pattern prediction, pattern recognition. But because of data and the computational power and the sophistication of models, they are now doing things, especially the routine ones, much better than humans. And when I say they, I mean the machines. So um, in the next slide, uh, I'm going back to what we shared earlier that in 2021, 99% of the executives said that they're investing in AI. And 92% of them were even saying that they're increasing their level of investment in AI. But that's not the complete sentence. In the next slide, you'll see that the continuation of that sentence is that even though they're putting a lot of money, a lot of investments in data science and AI, results continue to lag. Less than one-fourth of the companies invested in AI can truly say that they're successful or they can say that they realize their goal of becoming data-driven. Why is this the case? So um, in the next slide, uh, we, will, we will start in this section discussing why there is that huge gap and what is the needs 
or what are the needs of the different enterprises. Next. So you'll see here four items. I'll start with the understanding. Many of our business executives and even government, they lack proper understanding of what data science and AI is. Yeah, maybe some of them can define data science and AI, but um, truly understanding the impact of data science and AI to their processes and their products and also how they do things is something that's not very well understood. So that's one problem. The second problem is uh, in the next slide is strategy. Yeah, okay. So many um, enterprises cannot even articulate how data science and AI support their strategic imperatives. Right. Um, if you're in the business sector, this is definitely something that you're familiar with strategic management. But if you're in STEM or science, tech, engineering, mathematics, we are not as exposed to this idea of strategic management. And this is also where the gap is, because most data scientists are not trained in the language of the enterprise. And this is something that we are bridging in the MSDS program. The next issue is resources. So um, it's expensive. Data scientists, as you saw in this slide, are expensive. Uh, computational facilities are expensive. Um, keeping and storing data can be expensive. So that's another problem. And last but not the least, of course, the data science talent, right? And again, we don't just mean people who can do programming or people who can build AI models. Well, we're also lacking in that space, but more than the AI um, engineering skills, we also lack individuals who, like what we said, bridge the gap between technology and the language of the business. Many of the enterprise leaders are scratching their heads and wondering why they don't see any positive or a great impact coming from the field of data science. So to address this in the next slide, um, AIM built or offered this MSDS program, but at the same time built an, acceler uh, an, an accelerator of innovation called the Analytics Computing and Complex Systems Laboratory, which houses the fastest supercomputer in the Philippines and one of the fastest in Southeast Asia. So the idea of Access Lab is that it will house, like what I said, full-time data scientists to help enterprises um, solve their data science use case. And also at the same time, tapping our data science students. So once you're in the MSDS program, you're not only just studying, you actually have this opportunity to become a data science consultant while in the program. And um, in the next slide, I'm just gonna share with you the anchoring of the MSDS program. Because we are a business school, we're not just in touch with academia, we're in, you know, everything is very academic, um, but we're also uh, very much um, connected to the industry. So we get to hear and listen to their demands, the skills that they need for their organizations, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, we're also big with governments and society. So it's the same thing. We get to bridge all of this through data science. And this is why in the next slide, I'm very proud to share uh, with all of you that AIM's Master of Science in Data Science program, no, I, I just informally, sorry, I wasn't able to delete that. Informally, you can say that there's also a mini MBA there because about one third of our courses are MBA courses. From 2018, uh, since our, uh, since our, sorry about that, our, our inauguration, we have been put in the top three for the whole of um, Far East Asia when it came to data analytics. And since then, we only we didn't have 2020 here because of the pandemic. Um, but these are the numbers for you. And uh, in the next slide, I just checked this. I haven't told the team yet. 2022 ranking, uh, hello Vince and hello Tofi. 2022 ranking is out. And the Philippines uh, with AIM's MSDS program is still in the top three across all of Far East Asia. So if you want to be in the premier or top data science school in the 
in the region, you have you should also have a look at the Philippines, right? Now, in the next slide. Here, um, we, I, I just talked a bit about MSDX. It reflects the latest trends and best practices in data science and AI. It exhibits the proper fusion, which is something that I alluded to earlier, of technical and business and management courses. Students work closely with data scientists at Access Lab and also domain experts because your capstone project will involve external parties. They'll be the ones giving you data science project. That's why I also said that you will become data science consultants while in the program. And we train students to codify the right questions to ask and determine the correct data and tools to address highly diverse use cases. So how, how do we train students to do that? Um, the program is very, very packed. As you'll see in the next slide, we have the typical um, data science and AI courses, as you can see here, if you look at all the other data science programs, they will have a bit of these as well in their program. However, on top of this, if you go to the next slide, you will see that we're also very heavy on the business and management courses. Oh, so the next slide, sorry. The next slide, you'll see that um, there's a lot of business and management courses as well. This is one third of our curriculum. So imagine, taking up data science with a mini MBA. No? Uh, so you will learn, again, this is important because uh, you'll be working closely with these sectors, whichever sector you choose, but you have to understand what is important to them so you can deliver value. And if we go back one slide, thanks, Tofi, um, it talks about the electives. So if you want to specialize um, in other um, AI courses for fields, for example, image processing, data mining, sentiment analysis with natural language processing. We also have a way for this. Um, students are required to take at least two electives, but you can definitely take more if your um, time um, and your brain capacity could still handle it. Okay, uh, two slides next, just to give them a, a, on a big picture. So of the courses, the program is uh, five terms in total. You will get a Master of Science degree in just 15 months. But of course, you, if it's 15 months, I expect that the degree, the program is truly hardcore. Um, fast paced, really a rigorous, almost no sleep for the next 15 months. But after that, with the train that you will get, you'll have a job ready portfolio. In the next slide, um, this is something that we're also very proud of. Uh, this is now the data science consulting as part of your final project. This was our student. Her name was also Erica, uh, but that's just a coincidence. Here, Erica's group was presenting their solution to one of our uh, company partners uh, that, has, uh, that has a market share in the U.S. They have U.S. clients. This is in the BPO sector. So how does this process go about? Um, in the next slide, we, we talk about this a bit. Um, so what you'll see here is that the first step is because we have Access Lab, we have industry relationship manager that work closely with companies and with uh, government agencies collecting all of their use cases. Like what is it that you want to be solved in your organization? So we collect all of those and every time we make a call, we would receive around 20 to 25 projects. And then we present all of these projects, especially those that are filtered in, to our MSDS students, so that, to the whole class. And then the students get to group themselves into groups of four, three to four individuals. And that's going to be the consulting team. And the consulting team will start to write proposals on how they're going to solve the use cases. One use case could receive more than two more than one proposal. So what happens is that the students would have to compete. It's a healthy competition. They will each um, uh, give a pitch about their proposal, how, what they intend to do and to solve the use case. And one of them, only one of them will be awarded. So once you're awarded the project, 
uh, you can now start, uh, you know, building or studying the, the data and the question and building algorithms to solve their use case. So that's the whole pipeline. And it's a very unique, unique um, experience that you will get with this kind of setup. Um, in the next slide, I'll show you an example. So this is from a multinational company and they asked our students, can we perform preventive maintenance in our processes and machines to minimize delays in production and shutdowns? The management of noise is, um, is, is, a, is, a, is an issue faced by this 100 million USD production. And this question, it came actually from a Fortune 500 company. So in the next slide, you will see that yes, our students were able to build an ML algorithm to solve this with a really impressive impact. A gross annual savings of about 153,000 US dollars from May 2020 to April 2021 for one product alone. Let me just quickly Google how much 153,000 USD to IDR. So um, that's about, wow, that's about 2.4 billion. Imagine that value being saved because of the, the project of our students in close collaboration with our data scientists, our access lab, and also this company. Having that experience is something that you can show and share to future employers. Um, in the next slide, uh, I show another um, example. This is with a US company and one of the student teams also worked with them. Notice that I didn't mention which companies because um, of course this is a consulting gig. Students had to sign non-disclosure agreements so we cannot really share. Um, so the same thing, uh, it's, a, it's an AI question. Can we employ analytical methods to optimize the process of identifying potential leads? Because they are wasting a lot of time and money and effort contacting leads that are in fact weak leads. So what did our students do? In the next slide, you'll see the results. They're able to properly cluster the potential leads and we're just focused on the quality leads. This allowed the company to, to uh, have a potential additional revenue of about $27 million. Imagine that um, for all agents per year. Let me again do that calculation, 27 um, million USD to IDR. So that's about 737 billion IDR. That's no exaggeration. That number was actually given to us by the stakeholders themselves, not the students. In the next slide, in fact, it's a testament uh, to how happy, one more slide previews. Can you go back? So here you'll see how happy they are because they even wrote us this US company, the, the chief data architect just told us how happy they are with the product of our students and saying that uh, they're even um, helping in building their data science capability in the US. So again, in the next slide, the point is for you to have a job ready project portfolio, even as students. So in a sense, you can think of this as a working student, huh? although you're not getting salaries while you're studying, but you are building a very, very um, reputable and credible portfolio. And in the next slide, I'm just gonna show you how we give exams at AIM. Um, so this is a typical exam in machine learning. If you're in the field of computer science, um, usually they will say, oh, these are your data. Build an algorithm that can predict this output. So everything is stated very clearly. But with, in AIM, what we do is questions are open-ended in nature. This is an actual exam. So give, students are given with city data and they're asked, um, if you go to the next slide, they're not told which variables to use, but this was the question. You are an Asian Development Bank consultant and tasked to come up with a report to advise one of the, the central business district here in, in the Philippines or Makati City on how it can strategize 
to secure a high innovation index score in the next 10 years. You see, nothing here talks about the individual variables that you're supposed to use to build an ML algorithm. This is an actual exam. So your score in this part of the exam would be based on the predictability of your model, right? And also the interpretability of your model. Again, the thing that we have in mind is how do you explain this to your stakeholders? And finally, the overall quantity of the report. So that's what the MSDS program is all about. And in the next slide, this is really just to let you know how strong the alumni and industry network of AIM is. Once you're part of the AIM community, you belong to a family. And anywhere in the world, we have lots of alumni, even in Indonesia. Um, we have um, master in business management graduates and alumni in Indonesia, and also the master in development management. We don't have yet from MSDS, but hopefully, I don't know if you're convinced that you would, you would also want to be part of AIM's MSDS program. Thank you all so much and have a good afternoon. Thank you, um, Professor Erica. A very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, the fact that since 2018, MSDS is ranked number one in data analytics in Far East Asia. Number and three, Lani, sorry. Oh, number in three. 2022. We're top three. We're top, top three. three. Yes. Oh, okay, top three of rank uh, in the Far East Asia. Wow. Okay. And also the fact that it's uh, the business and management program is strongly embedded in the... Mm -hmm. Uh, data science course as well, right? Correct. Correct. So it should be very interesting for the students. Uh, next, we will pass the screen over to Tofi. You'd like to um, provide introduction on the school itself, right? So over to you, Tofi. Thank you, Ms. Lani. And uh, again, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tofi. I'm one of the um, admissions consultants here at AIM, particularly at the MS um, data in data science. I believe you heard of Dr. Erica, and I hope that you've been inspired with her um, uh, presentation. Not just presentation, but also what will you going what you what will happen to you after you graduated from this program. But before that, let me just play this um, video, a quick one, just a moment. I'm Kevin Anthony Season, the president of SETST Review Corporation. I belong to MSDS 2020. Choosing MSDS was really a natural choice in, in getting a hyper interdisciplinary education. This unique perspective that data science has given me opened a lot of doors. Recently, when they were looking at protein folding, molecular biology, biophysics kind of problem, machine learning offered a new perspective on how to solve that problem. I think the most important factor in succeeding in the MSDS program is having grit. No? You have to really want it. The training that I got led to who I am now. Doing data science at AIM is, of course, you get top-notch mentorship from data scientists in the region. Plus, having it in a business school gives it a very important twist because you're not just turned into a data scientist by, but into a data science leader. You're equipped with all those management skills okay, to handle not just data, but also people. <laughs> I'm happy and grateful that I was able to complete the MSDS program. It won't be possible without the help of my teammates and my mentors. Uh, we were able to you know, push each other in order to achieve our common goal.
All right, so that's actually our one of the alumni, and I hope that you get get inspired to that uh, with that video. Now, going to our um, Master of Science and Science program, just an overview of this one. I believe you're all asking what it will be the program details. If pro, of Dr. If Dr. Erica talk about um, the the um, deep deeper uh, message about it. And this one is an overview. Uh, we hope that you're gonna come here in the Philippines soon or next year. All right, so for those who would like to be part of the full-time or part-time, so full-time will be 15 months and it will start in July, 2023. And for the full-time, the, the um, classes will be Monday to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, in the Philippines. For part-time, it will be 24 months. It will also start in July, 2023. And it will be a um, online blended program wherein you're gonna have your online uh, classes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, which is from 7.30 to 9 p.m. But your Saturday will be a full day here at the Asian Institute of Management campus, right? Our application fee is 100 US dollars. And the investment, investment fee or the program fee is 29,500 USD. For the part time, we're going to um, give you more information about the program B. Don't worry about it, right? For the registration fee, we have the US uh, two thousand US dollars, which is non refundable and fully deductible from the program fee. So, if ever you um, pay for the registration fee, definitely you are a confirmed student, and you'll be able to apply for these scholarships that we'll uh, that we'll talk about later, right? Okay, just a. Uh, Program at the glance for the full time program. It's a 15 month duration and it has 36 units of data science courses, 16 units of business and, business and management courses, and six research and dev uh, development projects for your capstone project. All right, so just give you a glance for our current cohort, which is the MSDS 2023 class profile. We just started in July this year. Right, so a total of 86 students and um, 36 of them are female and the rest are male. Right, the average um, age is 30 years old. Our most experience is 48 and the youngest is 21. And uh, most of them are actually a graduate of bachelor's degree. And um, second will be the master's degree and um, a few from the PhD degree and others in curious doctors. You will also see here which um, courses they have been um, graduated. And then for the educational background, you will see this is actually this, the universities here in the Philippines, started with UP Diliman, De La Salle University, Ateneo, and then the UP Las Panas. All right, for the work experience, the average work experience is eight years and the maximum is 24 um, years. Uh, most of them actually coming from junior staff, which it, most likely they would like to be upgraded their, their um, career um, path. That's why they would like to take this um, program. After 15 months, definitely you will be able to upgrade your career. And then second will be the mid-management and last will be the senior management. And we also have um, a CEO or an um, owner of, the, uh, of the, um, the, the business. All right, for industry distribution, we have this um, five, top five. We have from banking and finance, IT and BPO, government, education and energy and utilities. Okay, All right, so let's go to the admissions process. So the qualifications with any background, or this is actually a diverse, uh, diverse program. So whichever background you you're, you came from, um, perhaps from from health, from from um, IT, or from education, you are free to apply. Although. Um, we, um, you must have a strong background in mathematics. That's actually one of the requirements. And you are also a bachelor's degree or a PhD degree or a fresh graduate. For fresh graduates, for sure, they will be able to have to, to um, take the exam. Um, I mean, the, the qualifying exam. So moving forward, this is, these are the steps for the application process. 
So normally we're going to send you an email or actually later we're going to send an email for the um, online application and the requirements that you have to submit. So this is the um, online application link. And later I'll show with you the other requirements that you have to submit. That's step one. Step two, you have to take your exam, which is the MSTS qualifying exam. Step three will be panel interview. And last will be your, um, just wait for your results. All right, so let's go um, for the step one. So um, once you completed your online application, these are the requirements that you have to submit, specifically um, your IELTS or um, TOEFL results. It's very important that we ha must have it. Your curriculum vitae, transfer of records, passport, copy of your passport, Recommendation letter definitely will provide you a template for that and your university certificate. You may actually screenshot or later you can just um, wait for our email as well. All right, so this is a QR code for the application, online application. Um, once you completed that, of course, definitely we are going to contact you through email or if you do have WhatsApp, why not? All right. Okay, next step is the MSDS qualifying exam. So this is this will be taken online. It's an 85, um, 85 um, points of the exams wherein um, it's taken the online through via Zoom. And these are the subjects or the topics that you're going to take during your exam. Again, this is like around two hours and 40 minutes. Um, definitely, we will going to uh, provide you um, some reviewer links to refresh your memory about the mathematics, specifically in algebra, calculus, um, probability and statistics, and also the programming itself. And yes, all right. Next, step number three, once you pass the exam, definitely you are going to um, the next step, which is the panel interview. The panel interview will be composed of our school head, and of course, Dr. Erica, uh, our academic program director and one of the data scientists. This is this time is for you to showcase your career, um, your career highlights, and also what will be your um, contribution in the in AAM and also to your country if ever you're going to um, to study here in the Philippines. Okay, and of course. The last step will be, um, we're going to send you the acceptance or the offer letter once you've done with the steps, uh, three steps. All right, so going back, uh, going, going or moving forward to the um, um, financing options. So we do have here the installments, we also have loans, and we also have the grant in aids. Um, it turns out that the loans are only for uh, applicable only for the Filipino applicants, but for the foreign, of course, we we offer up to five installment payments, and of course the scholarships. Okay, talking about the scholarships, here are the requirements. So we offer partial to full scholarship to exceptional applicants based on the admission assessments, educational background, professional background, and recommendation. These are the requirements for the scholarships. Again, only um, reserve or registered students can only apply for the scholarship. So let's say if you, you've done paying the 2000 US dollars, then definitely you may apply for the scholarships. Okay, moving forward for the next one is the loans, but um, this loan is applicable only for the Filipino applicants. Um, but if you do have your company who would a uh, company which would like to sponsor your program, you definitely let us know, and we'll be happy to to um, help you with that. Okay, all right. So for the installment options, we do have cash or full dual, three installments or modular. So we will, we will offer you up to five installment options. Okay. All right, so this is just a sample computation. So let's say for the investment fee of 29,500 US dollars, let's say you pay the 2,000 US dollars that will leave 27,500. And then you've been offered 
25% discount, which is equivalent to 7,375 US dollars, that will leave you 20,125. And then um, for this is only for the loans, but definitely this 20,125, you may apply for the installment basis, or if you do have your company to, um, to um, sponsors, sponsor this remaining balance, why not? All right, just to um, show with you the classroom that we have here at the Asian Institute Management, we are, um, since, since um, then we are actually having a hybrid um, setup and this is um, a Boitis text space where in our students, they will, you will see there that their classmates are online and some of them actually at the campus. Okay, this is another picture of the Boitis text space. All right, and I believe this one has been shown um, um, from Dr. Erica's um, um, Dr. Ed slides, and this is actually our access laboratory, and this is where our data scientists um, uh, you normally they, they stay here and do this the research, and you will also see the Super Joji, which is AIM's 1.2 petaflops supercomputer, the fastest supercomputer in the Philippines. All right, so just to share with you that um, at the moment, if you see that there is an application fee of 100 US dollars, we do have a good offer for that, that you can actually take a free exam. And these are the dates, the no from November 22 to November 26, November 29 to December 3, December 6, December 10. You may just go ahead and um, accomplish your your online application, submit the filing requirements, as you can see in the slides, and then definitely you are entitled for the free examination. You don't need to pay for the 100 US dollars. Definitely, uh, we're gonna contact you and arrange your preferred schedule of your exam. But this is only between the dates that it's um, showing in the slide. And what, what if you're done with the application process, you will be entitled for the early bird discount. As soon as you're done paying the 2,000 US dollars, definitely you're gonna receive this, um, this 2,950 US dollars early bird rate, which will be deductible from your program fee. Aside from that, you can actually apply as well for the scholarship. So this is until December 31, 2022, and it's limited slots. So we recommend or we encourage everyone to start the application process as early as now, or perhaps today. You can actually, right after this, you can um, complete your application, online application for the Master of Science in Data Science program. Right. Um, just to share with you, this is actually my colleague, um, David Prasnosa, um, one of the student um, um, consultant as well. You can have a one-on-one one one, uh, one -on -one, um, admissions or um, financing options that you would like to know or scholarships. Just take note of our emails or our um, Canonly, and then we are going to, um, to talk about more um, your, the application process. All right, so these, is, these are our um, contact information. Please email us at msds at aim.edu or WhatsApp 63908-851091. All right. All right, thank you so much for that. Okay, back to you, Ms. Lani. Thank you, Tofi. Uh, very interesting and very informative for our AECC friends as well. Uh, we'll have a look at some answers and uh, question and answers in the Q&A box. Uh, we have uh, a question from Pak Ben Hamadi. I hope Pak Ben, your questions uh, in regards to admission requirements uh, in the program and also the possibility of scholarship uh, were answered by Tofi just now. But if uh, it's not, of course, you can uh, chat again. So uh, in short, the there is a qualifying exam coverage, right, Toffee? And also admissions interview that students have to go through after they complete the application and fulfill all the documents. 
and be reminded the uh, application can be done through us at AECC as well. Okay. Next, uh, the second question uh, will be from Bayu Eka Salam. What are you to be prepared to be science data? I guess what is needed to be prepared for to be a data scientist? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you. That's an actually an, an excellent question. Um, like what Tofi said, it's possible regardless uh, of your background, educational background, you can go into data science as long as you're not afraid of learning numbers and programming at the same time, because these are important skills in data science. Having said that, again, however, if you're coming from a strong STEM background, computer science, physics, chemistry, any engineering courses, mathematics, um, you are a very strong candidate for data science. But data science is actually more than the academic um, theories and numbers. It's really more on problem solving. If you have a knack for problem solving, if you're excited by problem solving, then data science is definitely for you. Uh, but if you look at our um, statistics, the one that Tofi showed, uh, although everybody is coming from diverse backgrounds, about 80% of our students really have STEM background. Again, science, tech, engineering, mathematics background. But this doesn't mean that if your background is not in STEM, you cannot go or enter the program. You still can, but... Um, we have to make sure that you are quick to learn new skills, new concepts along the way. Um, because again, it's still two thirds mathematics and statistics and computer science at the end of the day. Um, maybe just one story. Uh, we had a development communication major who actually applied to the program. She did not have any calculus background um, coming into MSDS, uh, but she was she, she passed the qualifying exam, but really barely passed it. Um, but we interviewed her. We also looked at her transcript of records from college. And what we saw was that she was top of class, except that her course it wasn't in the STEM. That's why she didn't learn calculus during college. But we thought that, okay, this person has a very huge um, uh, potential in becoming a data science leader. And uh, we got her into the program. And true enough, she was, in fact, sponsored by the World Health Organization. And after she graduated, she joined the Department of Health um, in the Philippines and was very hands-on when it came to analytics related to COVID during the pandemic. So um, again, STEM is the ideal background only because you have math and computer science, but even if your background is not in STEM, you can still pursue given that you have the grit and the skill to learn new skills fast. So I hope Lani, that answers the question of our friend here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next would be, uh, I think, uh, I'm just checking with Pak Ben where mm -hmm. the, the uh, answers provided by Toffee satisfy him. If not, uh, Pak Ben, please unmute yourself and ask for more, especially on the scholarship. So uh, the summary of the scholarship would be that you need to get an offer first, right? To be able to mm -hmm. apply for the scholarship. Yes, Pak Ben, please unmute yourself if needed and you can ask questions. Okay, thank you so much for the opportunities. And thank you for your presentation. It was really very interesting. Okay, my question is related to the admission process. As what I see, we need to take a, 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 an exam before getting the admission. That means we need to pay like registration fee before taking exam or we don't need to pay the registration fee. 
Okay, let me answer that. Um, thank you, Ben. Nice to meet you. All right, regarding the um, exam, just like what I mentioned a while ago, um, I believe you're, you're, you're pertaining to the application fee. So for now, with our, um, we do have a promotion for application fee wherein you don't need to pay anything, just, just um, um, accomplish your online application and then submit your requirements. And then we are going to book your preferred schedule for your exam. So that's, you don't need to pay anything yet. As long as, um, and then when you pass the exam, you're gonna proceed to the interview, right? And then when you pass the interview, you will receive the offer letter or the acceptance letter. Then that's a time you're going to pay the registration fee if ever you're going to apply for the scholarship. Okay, thank you for your answer. Uh, may I yeah. ask about the like the requirement for the exam, like which uh, which kind of uh, subject that do I revise or what do I expect to find in the in the time of uh, exam, for example? Like me, I'm, sure. I have background for in economics, so maybe I need to revise something like programmation and other things. Okay, let me go back to the um, slides. And, and I can share that, Sophie, just flash the slides. So okay. economics, uh, that's also a strong background, Ben. No? Um, general mathematics and logical reasoning, algebra, that's college algebra, and the calculus, but it's only differential calculus, so we're not going to go uh, with the integration. Um, linear algebra, these are your matrices and probability and statistics. The, all of these, um, a total of 70 items. And then there's an extra 15 item test, which is not recorded by the way, on programming because it's specifically Python programming. So why are we giving this to students if we're not gonna count it? Well, it's crucial for us to understand where to benchmark you so we can advise you if, if let's say, your mathematics, everything is almost perfect, but then you are zero in programming. This will not harm your chance getting into the program, but we get to see that and we get to tell you, hey, Ben, your mathematics is good, but you will have a hard time in the MSDS program if you do not prepare um, enough to learn Python programming before the start of the program. So yeah, so overall, there will be 85 items in your exam the the 70 item they are the ones that we will use to uh to decide whether you're accepted or not the 15 item programming um tests will be to benchmark you so we can properly advise you on how you can augment further your programming skills i hope that helps okay thank you so much for your answer Great. Uh, well, ben, we'll contact you further to get your documents so that we can assist you with the applica application online on this program. Okay, thank you so much, Miss. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Another questions? I don't think we have another questions. If uh, that's the case, do you want to... Uh, add something more, otherwise I would close the session. Tafi? Now maybe Sorry. I can, Lani, to close this, Tofi. Um, AIM is really well known in Southeast Asia. If you want to stay here in the region and in Indonesia, because I know that Indonesia is also ramping up their AI, uh, if you want to help the government enterprises uh, there, uh, the Salim group, I know we met with them as well a few years ago. This is definitely uh, a way for you to get in. And if you want to end up in strategic positions, in leadership positions, go to AIM. That's what we will train you for. And AIM is really Asian businesses. So um, your background will be strengthened further in Asian businesses, not just in our region, which is ASEAN, but really the whole of Asia. And we have a lot of sister programs, MBA, MDM, EMBA. You will all be 
acquainted with all of them. So the network is something that you'll also value, not just within your generation, but even your children and your children's children. At least that's what we are seeing with our alumni. So thank you so much, Lani. Thank you so much for this opportunity and to ACECC Global. Thank you, thank you. So uh, friends at AECC, if you'd like to have a further one-on-one -on -one counseling with Tofi or FinCEN uh, through Zoom, we can arrange that for you. Uh, make sure you contact us at AECC and we'll make the arrangement for next week. All right, so uh, we have come to the end of our session today. So we would like to thank you, Professor Erica, Toffee and Finson for being with us this Saturday afternoon. And of course, we would also like to thank our AECC friends for your interest and for your questions as well. Remember, if you have any further questions and would like to know more about Asian Institute of Management, please do not hesitate to contact us at AECC and we'll make the necessary arrangement for you to meet with uh, either Toffee or Vincent. So we wish you a great afternoon and evening ahead. Uh, have a great weekend and stay healthy. Bye for now. Thank you.